Enter the music critic. I'm not going to start on a wildly optimistic note. Honey, it ain't what it's cracked up to be. I am sad about the decline of coverage in newspapers of classical music. Um, there's a lot less of it. And we're probably way this is to be really easy. Very hard to get a staff job. What exactly are we dealing with? The website Musical America recently counted the American newspapers that still have full-time classical critics. There are 11 of them. Those publications that still publish criticism often require it to be shorter, snappier, more blog-like, more Twitter-like. It's still happening, it's just changing. You have to be realistic and accept that this is simply a reflection of a sea change in our society. And if you look at the whole landscape, things have changed a lot in the last 25 years. There are a lot of smart people out there. We need creativity more than ever simply to find new outlets and new forms of expression and new ways of expressing ourselves. But that's exciting and interesting. And if music criticism is flagging in today's newspapers, as we all are accepting that it is, I think it's precisely because the way the profession has developed um, has leached it of a lot of this creativity. Nothing is more deadly to read than a formulaic classical music review. I think, in other words, the online stuff is uh, a fascinating, exciting addition to the possibility of distributing media rather than... I think it's great that there's that we have cyberspace where those conversations take place. I would think it's time to uh, admit blogs to the table. Perhaps the medium for the writing will change. Perhaps the writing itself will change. The goal is to create a piece of writing that communicates something fresh, which is fundamentally a creative act. Let's get to the heart of the matter. the Rubin Institute for Music Criticism. The point of this institute really is to not just educate at a very intensive level, but also hopefully for all of us to be able to really change the way we listen to music. Music is inconceivable without language. We have a desperate need to talk about our musical experiences, even if all we can say sometimes is that we have no words. And it's the conversation, whether it's with your peers, with your friends, with a critic, with your uh, fellow musicians, whatever it is, is one of the most exciting sort of aftershocks of the musical experience. It's been an extraordinary time. I'm very, very happy with the progress that the various students have made. And I have to say over the course of this week, uh, the quality of the output from the students has been extraordinary. Deeply interested thought about music is really filling the air. And even though we've really been working these students very, very hard. And that will not go away. I have to thank Steve Rubin for making it possible for all of us to gather and consider over five days what the heck it is we're trying to do in the rest of our lives. Whatever happens to print, whatever happens to the job possibilities uh, of uh, a young critic today, the institution of criticism and the ability of the particularly articulate and interesting and exciting young critic to rise into prominence, this will not go away. The critic has no fear of disappearing. One final attribute of being a good critic is knowing your limits and knowing when to stop. Thank you very much. (laughs) 